The next parameter we have here is what we call the gonadotropin. Gonadotropin. And the normal range is from 4.886 to 8.931. 4.886 to 8.931. The term gonadotropin relates to two very important hormones which have a direct impact on the reproductive organ we call the gonad. It's found both in men and in women. The gonadotropin acts on the testes in men and on ovaries in women to allow them to function correctly. The two gonadotropin hormones are called the follicle stimulating hormone, or called FSH, and then the luteinizing hormone, or called LH. These two hormones play a vital role at puberty to allow the body to reach sexual maturity and to allow men and women to eventually achieve fertility. Even though these terms, FSH and LH, relate to the activities in females, they are the identical hormones. They are the identical, identical hormones and these hormones are found both in men and also in women. Now, a deficiency can affect fertility both in men and in women and also in menstruating women okay and so if we are looking at this analysis here um, when um, you have it on yellow it is um, you, yeah, we are trying to say that the gonadotropin level is low when we have it on red that's moderately severely abnormal low we are saying that the gonadotropin level is uh, severely low if it is on yellow here moderate abnormal high or severe abnormal high we are seeing it is higher than normal however let me explain how this hormone works in the female reproductive system with an image just watch the screen i'm going to put up an image that help explain how gonadotropin impacts on the reproductive cycle of a woman Okay, so it starts from uh, the brain. If you can see here, we have the hypothalamus. If you look at this image very well, this is the human brain. Okay, and uh, we have um, the pituitary gland. The pituitary gland, somewhere around here, that's at, like at the bottom of the brain. Okay, and then um the the hypothalamus is found on the anterior the anterior uh, section of the of the brain okay and it is there that you will find the gonadotropin releasing hormone gnrh the gonadotropin releasing hormone now inside this gonadotropin releasing hormone we have two main hormones that comes out whenever gonadotropin hormone is released and it is the luteinizing hormone and the follicle stimulating hormone now now, now let me say this um uh luteinizing hormone the, the word lutein is referring to yellowing the word lutein is referring to yellowing okay so we are trying to say that the gonadotropin acts on the luteinizing hormone to yellow or <laughs> let's say yellow or color the, the, the cells yellow. Or when, when we are talking about yellow, if you, if you look at um, certain fruits, you will discover that when they get ripe or they, 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 they turn to yellow, it's, it's, it's signifying some level of maturity. Okay. Uh, follicle is a kind of um, a particular is a kind of uh, cell also, and the let me put it this way: for in female, when the gonadotropin is released, when the gonadotropin is released, it uh, it stimulates the release of frozen follicle. Now, this is the uterus. This is the uterus. This is the fallopian tube, and this is the ovary now inside this ovary remember we said earlier on that estrogen is produced in the ovary 
Now, these tiny um, things you are looking at here, these tiny cells you are looking at, are frozen follicles. They are frozen follicles. And what happens when gonadotropin acts on, on the ovary, it stimulates the secretion of um, it's, it, it, it stimulates the secretion of um, how do I put it now? The stimulation of this follicle to develop or to mature. You know, they are frozen initially. When that hormone is released, it stimulates it to now develop from primary follicle into secondary follicle. They, they develop from primary uh, follicle or they mature from primary, uh, primary um, follicle into secondary follicle, which in turn grows to produce different cells called estrogen. You see, when this follicle stimulating hormone is released, it moves this primary frozen follicle to develop into secondary uh, um, follicle, which in turn matures to form what we call estrogen. Now, this secondary uh, follicle develop into more mature follicles that thickens to form an egg. When they form an egg, then this egg needs to be ovulated. This egg needs to be ovulated. I can see. And that is where the luteinizing hormone comes in. If you look at this image here, this is still the uterus. And uh, you can see the LH. The luteinizing hormone acting on the ovum, the egg we call the ovum, okay. And when it when uh, ovulation, it, when it causes the egg to ovulate, then it moves out of the ovary. It moves out of the ovary and comes into the fallopian tube. It comes into the fallopian tube. Now. When a man sleeps with a woman, this is the cervix, this is where sperm comes in from. Uh, the sperm are supposed to speed and swim and come into this fallopian tube and meet this egg somewhere as an ovulated egg and then uh, fertilize it. Now, when it fertilizes it, then it, 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 it is good to go for entering into the uterus all right before we even get to that point meanwhile we have what we call um, the remainder of the utilizing hormone that's you know when the luteinizing hormone comes in here the, it begins to it begins to yellow the rest of the follicles that are here that are remaining you know there are several eggs, but just one egg gets when one when one when one egg gets ovulated and enters into this place and sperm meets it, we know that the journey has begun into pregnancy. But there are still remainder um, eggs that are here and cells that are here. They are what turns to become um, progesterone. They yellow up and build up. To form progesterone. Why? Because one particular egg has been fertilized. It's a chain reaction. As it moves in here and is fertilized by an egg, there's a chain reaction that makes the remainder ovum, the remainder follicles you are seeing here to turn to um, uh, yellow and form progesterone. Uh, pro progesterone. Okay. Now, when this happens, the main work of the estrogen and the progesterone is to prepare the uterine lining for implantation. What we're, what we're talking about implantation is that uh, it, it's, it changes the outlook or the surface area of all these places you are looking at in order to move this egg, fertilized egg, to come and be implanted into the uterus. Okay, so that is what the estrogen and the progesterone are doing in this place. Okay, but gonadotropin is what 
ensure this process goes smoothly. How? By stimulating these um, follicles to mature into secondary molecule that matures to produce what we call ovum, like, or what we call eggs. And then the luteinizing hormone comes to make the egg to be ovulated. When it is ovulated, it becomes uh, open to receive fertilization. And once that fertilization takes place, then pregnancy takes place. The remaining of these follicles turn to estrogen and progesterone and the help to prepare the uterine lining for implantation. Now let's look at a result analysis. Result analysis. Okay, so if um, if the results of the gonadotropin is on moderately abnormal high or severely abnormal high, it is generally not a concern because we want we if if we have sufficient quantity of gonadotropin, then with fertilization should not be an issue amongst all other uh, uh, minor issues all right because if gonadotropin is high it means there is sufficient secretion of follicle stimulating hormone and luteinizing hormone as a matter of fact when you see um, luteinizing hormone very low then it is there is definitely going to be lack of ovulation and when there is lack of ovulation uh, pregnancy cannot take place Okay, so uh, those are the major roles that these hormones play. Now, if it is a moderately abnormal low, severely abnormal low, is implying that uh, the uh, the gonadotropin level is low, and it, it it reduces the chances of pregnancy taking place. It reduces the chances of pregnancy taking place. Okay, so uh, this is what we need to know about um, gonadotropin now let's look at um, suggested lifestyle okay to boost the gonadotropin level to operate at optimum level you should eat more of natural foods healthy fats organic dairy and proteins as much as possible avoid processed food avoid sugars avoid starches from diet drink plenty of water avoid alcohol avoid carbonated drinks Find time to relax, relax well on a daily basis so that you can get rid of both emotional and physical stress. Get adequate exercise. Okay, Create few hours a week for recreational activities such as swimming, dancing, walking, fun activities. All those things tend to improve the fertility level. Okay, And keep the body away from uh, unnecessary stress. When it comes to herbs, maca roots, like I said earlier on, Will be very good in improving the hormonal level because gonadotropin is another uh, reproductive hormonal um, substance that the, that helps in fertility. Okay, so maca root also improves the gonadotropin level. Raspberry leaf works as well. Dandelion is rich in vitamins and minerals. You can also use that, and all this will help to improve the gonadotropin level in the body.